Hey y'all, I'm James Wright and welcome to the shop. I'm going to be chopping down a tree here soon and turning it into lumber, but for that I need a good axe. Um, and this is actually a fairly decent old axe, however it has been put through the ringer. So today we're going to look at actually restoring this axe and cleaning it up, getting it back to useful condition. So let's take a look. So this axe has a good bit of mushrooming on the back here that I want to get up. It's not a huge problem if I'm going to be chopping, but if I ever want to pound on this again, it could cause a problem with these little bits chopping off. Number two, this handle has seen better days. Uh, it's still really solid. It's good wood. It's just been discolored. There's been some rain and drips on it. It just hasn't been held very well. So we want to actually restore this and get it back to feeling good. One of the problems with hickory is that if you leave it too long and let it get too dry, uh, you'll actually start to see the grain opening up and splintering apart. The head on this is still really nice and solid, so I don't think we're going to have to do much problem with that other than adding a little bit of oil to it. And then of course, I want to get rid of a lot of this surface rust and clean up that edge, sharpen it, and get it ready to work again. So let's dive in and uh, do this. First things first, I'm going to get out a very heavy file and start grinding down on this. And I'll be going finer and finer. Um, and this one, I couldn't find my handle that I had for it, so I found if I just turn it around that I'm not having the problem with the handle. Um, but it took a little bit of time to, to go on it, but eventually we got it down. And then, of course, I also found the handle I needed for it. Basically, getting rid of any rough edges on there, I want it to be nice and smooth. I don't want any sharp corners. So we're going to be coming at this at an angle and just rounding it down and getting rid of any corner. That's what uh, might mushroom out in the future. Next, we want to get rid of some of the rust. And so I'll use some PB Blaster or WD-40 or something of that nature and a little bit of sandering. It's probably only going to take uh, five minutes or so per, head, per side of the head. I don't want to get down through the patina. I just want to get into uh, the, the shape underneath and, and pull out the, the rust itself. So putting in a coat of this and sanding it down works pretty quickly. Um, it, it doesn't take that much and I, I don't want to make it I don't want to make it glossy and shiny, but you can see how when you wipe that off, all of the, the rust comes with it. I'll usually do about two or three of these coats where I'll let it soak in, sand it down, and, and then come back to it. Still keeping that, uh, that nice dark coat on there, which will help protect it from rust in the future. Next thing we want to do is grind down the, the edge. This didn't have a, a very keen edge on it, so I'm going to get my coarse diamond plate. And I, in this case, I'm taking the plate to the edge rather than the edge to the plate. You get a little bit of a circular motion, and then I'll move it around in different sides of the plate. And I'm going to do both edges until I feel the burr wrapping around the other side. I'm trying to bring it back down into a nice, gentle edge. Um, it was a fairly blunt edge before, but we want to, we want to bring that out. I'm feeling the edge, making sure that the, the burr has moved over onto it. Then I have one of these sharpening pucks that I've seen a lot of axe people uh, really like. And I've had one for a while, and I, I, every time I get the chance to use it, I really, really like it. As one side is coarse, one side is rough. Uh, one side is coarse, one side is fine, and you just flip it over. So I'll be doing a while on the coarse side until I get the burr going back over to the other side. Then I'll flip it over and then hit it with the, the fine edge. And so we'll do both sides of the axe um, all the way down with this. And it, it is impressive how um, how sharp that can, it can make it. Even when out in the field, I'll bring that along so I can just brush up the edge. As to the handle itself, the, the wood is still nice and solid. It hasn't dried out too much. There isn't much checking in there. So I'm just going to be oiling it down. This is my, my homemade boiled linseed oil. And I'm going to let it soak into the wood as much as it will absorb. And then I'll come in and put another coat in about 15 to 20 minutes in between coats. I'm just going to let the wood soak up as much as it wants. Um, as, as it dries, I'm not waiting for it to dry, I'm just waiting for it to absorb into the wood, and then I'll put another coat on it, let it absorb into the wood, put another coat on it. And I'll do that several times until it's, it's staying on top. Also on this eye, I want to let that soak down into the head, and I ended up putting about 20 or so coats on this. Um, I want this to absorb as much oil as possible. Number one, that will stop it from absorbing water in the future, uh, so that it's not going to expand and contract and weaken the head. Um, and number two, it will also cause the wood to expand a bit. Uh, I'm going to then apply oil to all surfaces of the steel itself that will help seal the steel. And usually after each use, I'm going to apply another coat of oil to it and let that uh, um, sit on top of the steel, protecting the steel as well as uh, giving a nice finishing color to it. I'm going to let that boil linseed oil soak into the wood, and once it has cured and is set up after a, a little while, I'm going to come in with my paste wax and wipe it down with that. I'm going to put in a, a pretty thick coat of paste wax on top of this. 
and uh, that will, uh, will will sit on top of the wood, and I want that to then dry and harden um, on top of the, the wood itself. I'm going to let it sit there for anywhere from a half hour to an hour, or as long as it takes to, to get the top to no longer feel oily from the wax. I want it to feel nice and, and stiff. And then I'm going to come in with a rag and buff it off. This is going to take off the excess wax, but it's also going to work the wax down into the wood and seal it down in there. And this will give it a really nice feel to the handle. It's one of these things with, with a hand tool to have this uh, buffed in wax feeling is, is phenomenal. So we're going to shine that up, and uh, then we're going to take it out for a test drive. Now, this at this point, you start to see how the, the wood is almost getting a little bit of a shine to it. It's not getting you know glossy shine, but it's not that, that original matte finish. It has a, a fantastic feel, and uh, yeah, it's happy. So let's take this outside and chop it down. Now, my felling is not very good. This is not something I, I'm... I'm very proud of. I only had a chance to do it a few times. So this was uh, another chance to experiment. And so never never worry about getting out there and doing it right or wrong. Um, just have a little bit of fun with it. And we're going to chop down an angle and then we're going to slice in and let that chip pop out. And then chop down at an angle and then slice in and let that chip pop out. And so we're looking for these chips to come flying out. So chop in from the side, slice down from the top, chop in from the side, and then we, yeah, we got to work on accuracy. <laughs> I'm going to chop this through most of the way um, and I'm going to get about two inches or so from the other side and then saw this one down. Usually you would come in and you would um, chop the other side and then saw from this side, but in this case there's another tree on the other side, so I want to uh, break this off and let it fall down. Hey look! Tree! <laughs> yes, I'm really happy with how this came out and uh, thank you Grandpa for letting me use it. I'm looking forward to cutting down more trees in the future. Beware trees! And there you go. We've got ourselves an axe. Now this axe belongs to my wife's grandfather, and uh, I, I I didn't have a felling axe. I, the last one I had I loaned out to a friend, and he moved away, and I don't have any more. So this is one that my grandfather-in-law had, and he said I could use it, and I got it. I was like, mm, let's actually clean this up and make it a little bit nicer for him. It's not something you have to really polish up and make everything really shiny and pretty. A little bit of oil is all you really need. Sharpen it up, get rid of some of the rough edges, and you'll have a really good functioning axe that will treat you well for a long long time. It doesn't have to be perfect and shiny, just have a little bit of fun, smooth it out, and it's amazing what some homemade boiled linseed oil can do. Now on Saturday I'm going to be finishing cutting down that tree and we will be going through actually chopping the tree down and uh, then turning the trunk into lumber, which I'm really looking forward to doing that video. Um, there's a, there's a, several sections that are about four foot long that I want to actually turn into lumber. And so we're going to chop the tree down and then cut it apart and make some lumber, get that drying, and hopefully in the future have a project. So stay tuned for Saturday. But I just wanted to go through treating a good old axe and uh, getting it back up and running, which I really love this one. So thanks, Grandpa, for letting me use this, and I'm looking forward to the future. So I think that'll about do it for now. Thanks, everyone, for watching. If you have any comments, questions, or ideas, let me know those down below. That's it for now. And until next time, have a wonderful day. Wait, you want a joke? Okay. This is not a joke. Ha, 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 ha.